So I want to talk about your pigs and some management thoughts here um, related to water. So water. Water is a nutrient that pigs use the most of. Maybe we don't think about water as a nutrient, but it is, and it's uh, vitally important um, to our pigs, to their growth and development. So we're going to talk about that. So I'm a, a 4-H youth development educator in Morgan County in Indiana, and we have an activity that we're going to do um, that this will be recorded. You can go back to it and, and uh, maybe follow through it if you want to do it on your own. But uh, this is something we were going to do with our 4-H Swine Club. And uh, due to circumstances here beyond our control, um, that wasn't going to work out in person. And so we'll do it today uh, with all of you instead. So here we go. Let's talk about water and your pigs. And a couple of housekeeping um, notes just before we before Rena gets kicked off here. Um, again, please make sure you remain muted as well as keep your video off during this presentation. Um, it will be recorded and posted to the Indiana 4-H YouTube channel. Um, throughout the presentation, if you have questions, if you'll navigate to the bottom of your screen there um, within the Zoom profile, you will see a chat box. And please just type your questions as they relate specifically to Rena's presentation into the chat box. So Rena is going to answer questions about um, swine management today and um, questions that you may have related to your particular pig. All right. Okay, so I hope all of you will continue to join us for this series uh, as it goes on into June at least, and we'll learn about various different species and uh, management and other things as well. So let's go on, let's talk about water and your pigs. So um, how much water do pigs need? Pigs that are the age that you would be uh, feeding and caring for in 4-H, so we would call that the grower finisher age pigs and they drink anywhere from two to five gallons of water every day um, and they depend on you to provide that the peak drinking time is in the afternoon and the early evening when they're going to drink the most and at the end of this presentation i have some um, links that you can go to and learn more about this. Um, but this came from some research uh, out in Nebraska where they were monitoring what pigs drink and when and, and how much. And so they found that they get really thirsty in the afternoon. So it's on you, the 4-H member, to be responsible to get that uh, water to them, clean water um, that they can uh, get to access easily and um, remember that's a nutrient that they need. Okay, so let's talk about watering methods. Look at these pigs. Now they're really happy. I'm sure they are having a great time standing in mud and drinking their water. The guy or gal who owns these pigs may not be so happy um, because look at the mess that they're making. And uh, all this standing water is gonna attract insects and uh, you know, so it could attract bacteria and cause um, germs to spread and diseases and who knows what all. So um, not the cleanest way. Um, pigs are probably very happy, uh, but uh, I'll bet their owner is not. So I wanna call that an out of control watering method. Uh, many of us probably have a feed pan that looks like this. Um, this is not the best way to water your pigs though. It works well for feed, but uh, the, the problem we see, uh, they can get their nose underneath that pan and give it a good pitch. And pigs are so happy because they've made a, a nice cool place to lay down in. And uh, that 4-H 
probably isn't happy because they've saturated all their bedding and that's got to be replaced. So these are a couple of out of control watering methods. Um, and if we'd like to keep their environment cleaner and drier, we ought to avoid uh, these ways of getting water to our pigs. So here's some more methods that are controlled better. Um, the one on the left is a, a cup type waterer. So there's a pipe that's running down into this bowl. Uh, there's a nipple on the end of it that the pig can work with their nose and it squirts out water into that bowl and they can drink it. Works pretty well. Um, some pigs do learn how to play in these as they, they will in about anything um, and they can waste a bit of water that way, um, but it is a lot more controlled than say just having an open pan that they can flip up in the air and uh, make a big mess. So in the center, um, we have, uh, this is a, a bowl type waterer as well. And there's a flapper here that they push with their noses. This is in um, a farrowing crate. And so it's little pigs and they would just push on this. This could be replaced with a small nipple as well, um, but they learn to drink water pretty well out of this when they're young. Uh, and it just gives them additional water um, uh, in addition to what they are getting from the sow. So then over here on the right, this is a, a, a ordinary nipple waterer for adult pigs. And this would be the size that you would use for 4-H pigs. They're big enough and that nipple would fit their mouth very well. So they drink out of that. Uh, the water comes in through a pipe and uh, it's very clean. The water stays uh, cool as long as you don't have it out in the hot sun and uh, you know they've got clean fresh water whenever they want it. Okay so here's some portable waterers as well. The one on the left has a it's, it's just they're both just made out of PVC um, and the one on the left has a, a nice bracket that goes with it to hang it up if you're going to shows and to fairs, then uh, you take that with you and, you know, in a minute or less, you've probably got that all mounted in your pen and ready to go. So um, those are very useful. The one on the right is the one that we're going to make today. Um, and I'm going to show you all the steps to do it. Um, so that you've got a, a little water system that you can take with you wherever you go. You could use it at home as well. Um, your challenge is just let's keep it filled um, so that there's water available at all times for your pigs. Okay, we're gonna build a waterer today. And so uh, this is not a Hollywood stage set, this is a shop. Okay, and we just started putting things together and uh, built a pipe waterer. And so this is step by step how to do it. And uh, this whole thing was built for mm, around $20 or so. And uh, it's, it's pretty useful if you think about, you could um, amortize that cost over 10 years of 4-H, that's not a bad deal. So all of the tools here that we're going to need, uh, you'll see displayed. So you've got a piece of pipe, and this is four inch PVC pipe. Um, that's the, the inside diameter of it. There's a, a cap that goes with it. There's a, that's a, it fits it just perfectly. And I'll tell you, don't play with that cap and try to put it on the end because I did that and we had it, it fits very well. It fits really tight. And so we had to knock that cap off with a hammer. So um, don't put that on until you're ready. OK, so also um, there's some Teflon tape. Um, I have two different kinds of nipples here. And so the, the one you see on the left is just a, a nipple waterer and um, it is actually for pressurized water like we saw coming out of the the pipe waterer um, 
what we have here with our, our PVC waterer is called gravity flow. And so it's just the, the flow of gravity that gets the water out of that uh, waterer to the pigs. So you want the proper nipple for that. Um, and so the um, package there on the, the right has a, the right nipple in it. And it also has um, a, an adapter that will uh, clamp down and hold water um, really tight. And uh, it's, it's gonna put a good seal on it and you can uh, just turn your nipple water into that and it should fit without leaking. Okay, there's also some PVC cement. Um, there's some plumber's tape, which we're gonna use at the end to try uh, and mount it, but there are different ways of doing that as well. Um, there's a, a drill here, there's a hacksaw. Um, along with your drill, you'll need a half inch um, hole saw bit and um, we've got a crescent wrench, we've got an adjustable pliers, we've got some sandpaper, there's a three-quarter inch wrench which you could probably fake it with your crescent wrench or your adjustable pliers as well. Um, there is a, a screwdriver here that we had to use <laughs> because when you uh, use a hole saw and drill into PVC um, that PVC can get really hot. And what it actually did was uh, it swelled into that hole saw and we had to stop and pick it all back out and get all the PVC fragments out of it. So hopefully yours won't do that, but um, if that's the case, have something just to dig that all back out with. Okay, so there's all our tools and the uh, pipe itself, this pipe that I had needed to be um, cut flush at the end because it was kind of a ragged cut. And uh, you may be able to get that done if you buy it at a hardware store, they might cut it for you. Uh, if you tell them you want it uh, about four and a half to five feet tall to hold plenty of water. Okay, so there's all our tools. Um, I also put in there that you ought to have some adult supervision because we're using uh, some hand tools and power tools and some safety glasses and I'll use those at the point when we do the, uh, um, the drilling of the hole. So that's everything that we're gonna need right there. Um, and I, I don't think I mentioned the half round file that helps to um, clean out the inside of the pipe when we do that. Okay, so here's what happens. I uh, cut the end of that pipe and then filed it off both on the inside and on the edge just so that it was nice and smooth because um, we don't want all those fragments in our waterer. Cleaned it off really well and then um, used some sandpaper to um, just polish it down a little bit better. And you can put your hand inside of that pipe and run it around, it feels really smooth, then I think you're good to go. So then uh, I also ran that um, sandpaper around the outside of the pipe because the, there's a finish on these PVC pipes that's uh, really slick. And we, uh, we wanna be careful that right there where we're gonna put the cap on with some PVC cement, that we rough it up just a little bit in that spot so that the cement will stick better. Um, and so I just uh, roughed off, oh, I don't know, about an inch around it, all the way around uh, from the bottom just to uh, make sure that that all um, adheres. Then you take your cap and you estimate kind of where that cap is going to end up. And I just drew a line above the level of that cap to say, here's about where I think the top of that is going to be. It was close. I think I was a little bit high. And uh, then I put the, uh, the hole uh, about an inch above that. And so as you look at the third picture there, the picture on the right, um, that's showing the 
um, piece that's going to go on the outside and we're going to screw that nipple waterer into that. So I just ran around the inside of that and uh, marked it with a marker and made sure that I know exactly where to drill that hole and then you uh, pull that piece away for right now and uh, we'll uh, get that hole drilled out. So um, put on your safety glasses to do this and you want to cut that, uh, just get it through the, um, the PVC pipe and uh, hopefully um, that uh, hole saw bit won't uh, stop up with PVC like mine did, but I think you'll do just fine and, and cut that half inch hole right there. Um, and that's where we're going to put the nipple. So all the way over here on the right, uh, this is the, the one piece that is on the outside. And then this over here, um, sitting on our table, is the piece that's going to go inside the pipe and screw on the other side of this one. So those two pieces, once they get put together, will create a really nice seal there so that water doesn't leak out around it. Because there's underneath this piece on the outside, there is a, a gasket that's going to um, adhere to your, uh, your pipe and make a really good seal. So as you're tightening this down with the, a crescent wrench here, uh, you want to be sure that the gasket underneath stays where it needs to be because uh, it might bunch up. So uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, so now we can look inside of this pipe and uh, up here we've got the, uh, the fitting on the outside and then we've uh, just manually screwed on this fitting on the inside and uh, tightened them both down. So you'll have to have somebody help you with this part. So if you hold the one on the top and tighten and they're holding the one on the bottom, um, you'll make a good team and you should be able to put these together good and tight uh, and it'll uh, seal the water in. Okay, so there it is finished. And you can see into the pipe, there's a hole in it. All you gotta do now is put that nipple in it. Um, this one is actually not a gravity flow nipple. This is a pressurized one. You can see by this band that's right here, it, it fits a little differently. Not all of them are blue. Some of them are uh, made out of brass. Uh, but I'm putting some Teflon tape here right on the threads of this nipple. Um, but the nipple that comes with this fitting here in the, in the uh, two-piece package um, is actually a gravity flow nipple, which is what you need for this kind uh, of a waterer. So either way, you're going to put your uh, Teflon tape on it. That again is just helps to, to seal up what you're doing. This is where the three quarter inch wrench came in, um, which you could use. Um, I don't know, you could probably use a slip joint pliers to do that as well. Just to screw that in and tighten it down and make sure that your nipple is uh, facing the right way so that um, the, the bottom is right here where the curved part is. That needs to go on the bottom and the peg here in the top needs to go on the top. Uh, um, that way the water comes out right when they drink it. Okay, so then remember we scratched this up really well so that the um, PVC cement would adhere better. So um, I'm running cement all the way around the outside of the pipe. You don't need to put it inside, just on the outside. And then you slide that cap on and it better be where you want it because it's going to stay there. Um, and the cap, even without the cement, um, is a tight fit. So um, just be aware of that. And so here we've got our cap on. Take a rag, a paper towel or something, and wipe off the excess glue um, so that that's nice and clean. And there you've got it. you got a waterer right there. Um, and I think uh, your pig will be uh, very happy with it. We're going to test it out here in a little bit, but uh, that's your waterer. The only thing we have to do now is find a way to secure it and to hang it. 
So here are a couple of brackets. Um, this is a, an older waterer, same version of this that um, it's, it has a bracket that's on a piece of wood um, that they could hang it up from there. Um, I use this plumber's tape. It has many different names, but it's a, a thin metal strip, what looks like tape, um, and it has holes in it. And so you wrap it around the, the top of your waterer and also around the bottom. Um, and then you can secure it to a post or to a pipe or whatever you have um, in your, to a wall even in uh, your pig's pen uh, there at home, or you can secure it uh, when you get it to a show or a fair, wherever you're going. So we uh, brought on some taste testers to see what they thought. They were pretty happy with it. Um, there is a concrete block here underneath this one just to hold it up. Um, pigs can get rowdy and they could root on that, especially if you let it run empty. They get really aggravated because that's where they're, they're taught to go to get water. So make sure you keep it filled. And so um, if, uh, if you do let it run empty, this is a word of caution. They'll, they'll get rowdy with it and we don't want them to, you know, you've done all this work to make this really cool thing yourself. Uh, we don't want them to beat it up. So you put a, a block underneath it and you secure it to your fence, to a post or whatever you have to secure it to. Uh, make sure that it sets on that block. I would caution you, there are holes in concrete blocks and you don't want them to be facing up uh, because a pig could stick a hoof in there and potentially hurt their leg, break their leg if you're not careful. So uh, make sure that the flat side is uh, facing up. Make sure that that block is secure too. Um, pigs just like to play with things randomly and a concrete block to push around their pen, well, wouldn't that be fun? So you'll wanna secure it as well to the fence so that they can't um, move that. So I think they approved of what we made. And here are some references that uh, you can go and um, look up. Um, Let's see if that'll come up in our, it might come up or it might not um, in our presentation here. So this is from eExtension and they talk um, all about the um, water and um, how much water and various different issues. Okay, and let's, uh, let's see here. Here's another one. This is from Pork Information Gateway. And uh, yes. It, they, for whatever reason, it's not. It's not showing. Not Are sure. you just seeing links? We see the links, yes. Okay, so we'll just stop with that um, because I'm seeing something different, but that's okay. Um, and so, you know, once this is recorded, why um, you can go to those links and, and find that as well. So um, there they a, are. We have a couple questions about um, watering your pig. And um, the first one is what temperature should a pig's water be? Okay, well, um, room temperature is great. Um, you want to make sure that your waterer isn't in the sun um, because that does make it hot. That would make the nipple hot and they may not want to touch that. Some people will use a nipple waterer just on the end of a garden hose and that works as long as that hose is in the shade and it's not in the sun because a garden hose really heats up that water. And so I'm going to say that, uh, you know, 75 degrees is, is about a perfect temperature for water um, or maybe less. Um, if it gets above 85 degrees, um, the, the water temperature itself, um, they're going to be reluctant to drink that unless they just have to. Um, and along with temperature, height is very important too. Um, can I stop sharing the screen here? Would that yeah. be okay? Okay. Yep. 
There we go. Okay, so along with temperature, the height of your water where the nipple is is very important because if pigs are drinking with their head running downhill, it takes a lot more effort to get that up uh, into their throat and to swallow that. So if they can um, be at a little bit of an upward angle so that it just runs right down their throat, that's um, important. So when you uh, mount your waterer, make sure that that nipple is at the height of their head or maybe about an inch higher. And guess what? Your pig's going to grow. So monitor that week to week to see if is it still high enough um, that as they drink that that water is just going to roll right down their throat? And, uh, and uh, temperature, that was a good question. Thank you. Um, and then also, how often should you clean these types of waters? And um, is there any particular product you would recommend to clean them with? You know, if you clean them weekly, just dump them out. Um, and and clean them out with some hot soapy water. I think that's about perfect. Make sure it runs through the nipple. Get a brush and scrub out that nipple um, and, because you know pigs are slobs, so they're going to really make a mess of it, and that's okay. Just uh, scrub that out really well. Make sure that uh, the nipple is functioning and you can get water out of it. Um, but if you can clean it weekly, that would be great. Um, that uh, keeps the bacteria and even algae from growing on the inside of it. Um, if you put a lid on it, um, in my mind, I thought, well, I'll get another PVC cap and put on it. But those are really difficult to get off. Um, if they, uh, you know, once they've adhered to it, they fit really tight. So. Um, if you can just put some kind of a covering over it to, uh, you know, to keep um, bugs from getting in it, as an example, and other things and dirt and things like that, um, that'll help as well. Some of them come with a, uh, like a twist on fitting uh, that has a gasket on it, and that works well too, especially if you're at a show, then you know that nobody's tampering with your uh, waterer. Um, but I think as long as you keep it covered and um, when you are at a show, put it um, toward the back of your pens so that the public can't touch that waterer or your feeders. Uh, I think that's just good common sense to do that. Okay. Um, someone asked, can we put plastic water bottles that are frozen in our pen to keep are pigs cool in the in the summertime? Pigs would love that. They love ice. Um, as long as you can keep that cap on your water bottle, I think that's a perfect thing to do. Um, they'll play with them. They'll lay on them. Um, they might pick them up and carry them around. Who knows? Um, just so long as you can um, keep that cap on it, because you don't want a pig to swallow a plastic cap. Um, so um, I've, we've used those especially with nursery pigs that are smaller because they're so active and they need something to do and uh, that keeps them cool. But uh, you know, while you're talking about um, things like keeping your pigs cool, uh, it's not a bad investment to buy a couple of bags of ice to toss in your trailer when you go somewhere with your pigs um, and they can tear up that bag and sling that ice and uh, have uh, a nice cool place to lay down um, while you're on the road. So um, just some things that we learn as we go along to keep those pigs happy and, and healthy and safe. Okay. And someone asked, can you use a hundred gallon cattle tank? To water your pigs. Well, it depends. Um, on how you're going to get the water out of it. I suppose you could run a pipe with a nipple waterer to your pigs from that. Um, and when you have, and, and I mean, that would um, be a, a large reservoir of water for your pigs um, if you had a way of them getting to it. Now, some of these tanks have a, um, 
a lower side with a, a place where they can drink down at the bottom that pigs can get into. I will tell you, they make a mess of those. If you're trying to keep your pen dry, um, they're going to learn how to play in that and get water all over. Um, so that wouldn't be my first um, option, but if that's all you've got, um, that's a way to do it as well. Um, yeah, that could be done and you'll have to clean that tank out frequently as well because um, there's more surface area that could, you know, in the sunlight grow more algae. And so you're going to have to be uh, cognizant of that and keep that cleaned out. And they did, she did say with the nipples on it. So, yep. Okay, that works. Yeah, if you've got a nipple, that's just a big reservoir then for your water um, to get that to them. But monitor that to make sure you don't get algae growth and just uh, you might have to dump it a few times and scrub it out with some uh, some soap and water. Um, you know, I generally that will take care of it um, unless you let it go too long. And that made me think of a good good comment slash um, kind of discussion point. Um, anytime you take your animal from home to a, a different environment or a show, you have to make sure that they they know the expectations of them. So if, let's say you have a nice water like this at home um, and you decide not to take it to the show, you'll want to practice with your pig in, in drinking from a bucket um, because they, they may not automatically know how to, to drink out of that bucket. So um, it's important that we kind of practice some of those um, tactics at home if you're planning on taking um, your animal somewhere. And that can be said for any animal. And the other point, Rena, what about going from home to, um, to another facility to perhaps show your pig or um, taking it to maybe even a a uh, school ag day or something like that there's different water so so how is my pig how do I get my pig used to whatever type of water that may be if you have space and you can bring some water from home just to get them started with and you could mix it with the water at the uh, the place where your event is if you needed to um, Generally, the more water you can bring from home, the more they're adjusted to that and they um, are used to that. But you, if you go to a fairgrounds, it may be on municipal water system, which could have chlorine in it. Maybe they're not used to that. Um, so uh, it's a good idea just to bring some in a, if you've got a five gallon bucket that has a, a sealable lid on it, um, or, or if you have some, um, big water jugs to bring those with you, at least to get them started. So they know this is where I drink water and yeah, it's okay. Um, Cause there's uh, nothing worse than an animal that uh, doesn't like the water. Generally that's not a pig. That's usually gonna be a ruminant animal that will um, have some trouble adjusting to new water uh, in a new location. Um, but bring a little bit along from home. Okay. And good point. Yeah, just to reemphasize, I guess, you know, a pig withdrawing from water, what what can that mean? Um, there could be deeper issues than uh, just that he, he or she won't drink water. They, you want to check um, like their temperature just to start out with feel of their ears and see if their ears feel hot because uh, they, they may not be feeling well. Look for a nasal discharge uh, or generally sluggish, lethargic kind of actions out of them. Um, if they go off water, they'll probably go off feed as well. And um, that's not a good time to be traveling. So if, uh, if your pig just doesn't act like himself or herself and you're uh, thinking of going to a show, um, they may need some help before they go. Um, so um, look for those kind of uh, uh, signs before you uh, load them up and take them somewhere because the stress of 
a uh, trailer ride and the stress of a new location and going to a show will only exacerbate those situations. Okay. And then um, if you can't bring your own water, can you put something in the water, um, like a flavoring to help them drink? You know, that's a good thought too. And you can start this before they leave home. Um, Gatorade is a good adjuster, um, or there are other preparations very similar to it um, that uh, put some um, nutrients back into them and some electrolytes. So if you put a strong flavoring in it, which pigs like things that are sweet. So uh, Gatorade is a, a great way to uh, just put that in your water. You can Buy it generally in a, a powder form and mix that in uh, with their water just to get them used to that. And that does kill the taste of, you know, um, city water or something that might be new to them. That's a good, um, that's a good suggestion as well. Yeah. Uh, there was another question about um, if your pig's injured what do you do? And then it was very particular to breaking a leg. Um, in that situation, I think Green and I both would recommend that you call your veterinarian to, to figure out what you can do to help that um, particular pig. And that probably won't be a show pig if it's uh, broken a, a bone. That's uh, not a good situation. And um, that takes a long time to heal. And we, at this point of the summer, don't have that kind of time to um, get that pig out on the road and um, uh, walking on it like a show pig would have to do. So um, that might be the, uh, the final straw for that pig in its, uh, its days at the show. Yeah. How many times a day do you need to water your pig? Well, you need to monitor this. I would say twice will be just fine if you've got, you know, a reservoir to put it in. Um, that waterer we made will probably hold five gallons of water. Um, and we said that a pig can go through at least two gallons a day. Um, so the idea is if you have more than two or three pigs on one waterer, maybe you better get a second waterer. Uh, just so you've got enough storage space there um, so that they all have a chance to drink and they have enough. And especially in the afternoons, if you're at home or you're where your pigs are, go check them in the afternoons just to make sure they've got water because that's when they'll be thirsty. That's when they'll drink the most. So uh, generally, if you can fill that pipe in the morning and then fill it in the evening, I think you're gonna be in good shape. Okay. And then we just have a kind of a management question as, as you're working with your projects. If you don't mind answering, Rena, what is a good way to teach your pigs how to, to start walking and responding to you that way? Do you have any tips after having 4-Hers and being a 4-H member yourself on, on how to get that process rolling? So first of all, your pig has to know you and um, understand that uh, you're a pretty good guy or a pretty good gal. Um, and so I tell kids, um, as you first get your pigs to go sit on a bucket in their pen and let them come up and sniff of you and chew on your boots and make sure that they know you pretty well. They want to make you smell just like them, you know, and that's how pigs make friends. So um, they're going to get you dirty and that's okay. Um, but they're trying to find out who you are. So you sit on a bucket, um, you know, you feed them a little treat and most people like marshmallows. They're cheap and pigs really go for them. Um, so uh, once they have become your friend, then you start brushing them and uh, pigs are either going to really like that or really hate it. If they don't like it, get a softer brush um, and just start uh, working with them that way. So uh, they will quickly be probably be all right with you. Um, I'm going to assume you have them in a pen. You need a bigger area where you can let them out and walk them around. Um, it's best if you start out that it is enclosed uh, so they don't uh, 
take off and bolt and get away from you. Um, but uh, to walk them short distances and they just need to get used to you being behind them. Um, if you've got a, a pipe or a whip, I guess I would, uh, I, I can't recommend pipe or whip either one. It's kind of a personal preference, but uh, I think it's a, a better deal to use the, uh, the show whip when you're actually in a show situation. You might use a pipe at home and that works great. That's just fine. Um, the, I guess the thing I see is uh, too many kids that really um, uh, whip that pig a bit too much. And so be cautious around its eyes. Um, you know, there's a, around their, their jowls, there's a lot of fatty tissue there. And that's where that, um, that whip or that pipe needs to, to be but between that jowl and then back into the side of their neck and their shoulders. Um, and keep that, whatever you're using, keep it out of their face and their eyes. Um, we have purchased like gilts before that have been to shows and fairs and uh, people were going to put them on the truck to market and you think, wow, that'd make a great sow. So uh, you just buy it and uh, bring it home and you can't touch their face for like the first month because they've had too much activity with that whip right up in their eyes or in their face. So um, I would be cautious. I think you can teach that pig to steer left or right um, uh, just by using their shoulders and that that fatty tissue in front of it and uh, staying, you know, off of it. But now I do understand when you've got to turn them, you need to get that pipe or that whip in front of their nose. Uh, and you can start out by using your hand so you're sure that they see what you want them to do. And they'll figure it out. Um, they're pretty smart and they'll see that uh, there's a circular thing we've got going on here. Okay, I understand that. If you do it enough, repetition's a really good teacher. So um, I think you got to start out slowly. Eventually, um, they're going to get bigger and slower. Younger pigs are really quick. Uh, they're going to slow down a bit as they get older because you're putting a lot more weight on them. So then you can take them out into a bigger area like a pasture or whatever. Some people like to let their pasture grow so that the grass is a little bit tall and they keep their head up that way. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that um, unless your neighbors don't like seeing that tall grass. But um, to uh, get them out in a in a a less uh, confined area, eventually you'll get to that as well. And uh, you can, you know, get them going in a circle or whatever way you want them to go. So those are just some thoughts that I have, but as long as they understand that uh, you're the person that feeds them and takes care of them, that's a good thing. Um, so that they're not afraid of you. When we see pigs jump and bolt at the county fair, you want to think, there's either something going on with that pig or he's just not been um, played with and handled enough. So uh, they've got to get used to you and you the uh, used to them as well. I hope that helped to answer your question. Yes, it did. I said, thank you. Um, and then another question related to the water. Um, if my pig messes with the PVC water, what should I do? Um, so if they knock it down, it's, it's really almost indestructible. That stuff is so tough. Uh, I guess the glue could give way and the cap could come off of the bottom. Um, but you do want to secure it uh, to your fence or to a post. Um, they're going to, they might play with it some, but most of these nipples are um, made so that they uh, won't be spraying the the water everywhere um, or if you've got a nipple that's worn out uh, that that might be a, an indicator let's if it's you know spraying too much let's uh, put a different one in there um, but uh, make sure that they can't knock it down because that's where they're going to really mess with it um, and if they are constantly rooting it up and down then secure it um, you know, with uh, the, the uh, plumber's tape that we were showing um, 
or the, a bracket of some kind, uh, just so that uh, they, it stays in place. Um, I've also done this before. If you can go to your local bowling alley and ask them for um, old bowling balls that maybe are out around or have a chip out of them that they would just throw away if they would save those for you um, and let your pigs roll those around in their pen because uh, they have a need to play. And, um, you know, a, a bowling ball is a great thing because it's, it's heavy and um, they can root on that and play and generally they're not going to hurt anything with it, but it's a, it's a toy for them. Or take a, a chain, a pretty heavy chain, and chain it to your fence somewhere and they can come up and chew on that and um, play with that chain. Um, you know, they're, they're still young. They like to uh, kick things around and enjoy life. And so sometimes you've got to have some pretty sturdy toys to keep them uh, busy if they're bored. And uh, those are a couple of examples of that. So yeah, you don't want them to make your, uh, your PVC water or their toy. Um, so find them a distraction somehow uh, so that they just drink water from it. Yeah. And then one last question, um, natural alternatives to paling or ractopamine. I would encourage you to have a conversation with your local um, nutrition company there. Maybe it's your feed mill. Maybe you have access to a swine nutritionist, but that would be the best place to start to kind of start having that discussion about what, what might help um, your particular pig enhance their muscle composition. So um, I would encourage you to kind of start there and see see what ways um, can help. I do know that a large component of gaining muscle is actually this water, the, the element of water. And um, so it's kind of fitting that we're talking about water today. Um, so again, just, just have those conversations um, because it's going to probably be a, a matter of what you have accessibility to as well as um, your pig's individual composition is going to be different than my pig's composition. So um, it, it would really help you to have that conversation to see what specifically can, can help you um, and your, your goals with your project. So, and, and let's think about exercise too, to build muscle, get that pig out and walking. Um, and you may have to do that at six in the morning when you've got a really hot day coming. Um, uh, be sure that uh, you're not putting your pig under any undue stress. So that might be a late evening, early morning activity for them. And when the sun's hot during the day, they can uh, just uh, take a nap. And, uh, but uh, exercise is another way to build that muscle. Yeah. And figuring out, um, we'll get a little scientific here, but figuring out your water levels, your protein and amino acid levels is going to help you find uh, natural enhancements within your particular swine project as well. So kind of some big language there, but um, swine diets as well as any animal diet in our own diets are fairly scientific, but when you break them down and figure out kind of what's missing, that's when we can really start to help manage that particular project. And actually it's pretty fascinating. Um, even, even within ourselves, when we maybe decide that, and again, not suggesting this, not promoting this, but maybe we decide that we eat too much sugar, and then we, 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 we start to have one candy bar a day instead of three, or one sweet treat a day instead of three, then, then we start to see some changes in ourselves, and the same, same types of things can happen um, with your animal projects as well. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out what they're missing and what could benefit with them. So there are lots of adults who make who make great strides in, in helping to improve the diet of our animals. So I would encourage you to reach out and have those conversations. All right, Rena. Well, I think that is all the questions. I am going to now post the um, survey, the Qualtrics survey in the chat box. And uh, again, if Hi. you're educator ask you to um, complete this survey. It is now posted here. You should be able just to click the link or um, you may have to take a screenshot of it and go to it. Uh, but again, please take a chance and complete that link so we can let your educator know that you were here. 
Uh, we appreciate you coming and, and joining us. Next week, we're going to talk about how to locally market your 4-H um, animals. So uh, lots of people are interested in buying your animal. Um, as the end goal, of course, for most of our market animals is to, to become a part of our own food system. So we have lots of people who reach out and are interested in buying our animals. Um, and so this is an opportunity for you to, to kind of think locally about how and who might be interested in purchasing your animal and uh, kind of starting that conversation. So next week we'll be joined by Miranda Edge, who's a Ag and Natural Resources Extension Educator down in Harrison County. So uh, we look forward to that. Rena, any any closing remarks or comments that you challenge? Well, I wanna, I just wanna thank everybody for coming by today and um, best wishes with your swine projects. I um, hope it all goes well and uh, you know 4-H and animals are a great way to learn um, and you'll just never forget the the lessons that you're learning right now um, and you know we talk about nutrition and uh, we talk about uh, you know muscle and we talk about an animal skeleton oh my goodness the things that you're learning that can apply to people and other animals it's pretty fascinating like Courtney had said so um, I appreciate your time today and uh, best wishes to everybody through the summer thanks for having me yes thank you again Rena and um, if you have any questions I'm sure Rena would be happy to help you or if um, you get in the midst of this project feel free to reach out to Rena or myself and we'll help you uh get answers to those questions. Best wishes and if you do make one of these, we'd love to see you share it on social media with the hashtag Indiana4H or um, Indiana4H grows here or grows here. Um, yeah, we'd love to, to see that and we can share that with our clientele.